Good morning, Wesley, and all anywhere who join with us on this glorious day. Uh, because we are still in the, the Easter season, what do we say? Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. I am so glad you are here worshiping with us on this wonderful and special day. Now, before we begin our time of worship, uh, let me share some very important messages with you. I've been working on getting these down. I'm going to get them shorter and shorter each time, so bear with me. I hope you notice that we have two service choices, our contemporary service and our traditional service. And as always, the choice is yours. Uh, I also hope that you notice that little reminder uh, right between the two launch buttons. It says, before the service starts, would you please register your attendance? Let us know who you're praying for, and if you're so inclined, make your gifts to God. However, if that did not happen and you're already in the service and you want to pause it and go do it or you want to do it after the service is over with, again, the choice is, is entirely up to you. Uh, in any case, thank you so much for your continued support of the church. It is most appreciated. And thank you for just being here with us this morning. Uh, don't forget, you can join one of our live broadcast Sunday school classes through our Zoom meeting capability, which you'll also find on our website. And we are adding new things to the website almost every week. So be coming back and looking at it each and every week and see what's new. And speaking of what's new, next week we will be adding yet another card. Uh, this one is about our 2020 graduating seniors. I'm excited about this new effort, and I'm looking forward to us showing them some love during this craziest of all years to be a graduate. Nobody will ever forget the class of 2020. Okay, that's enough from me. Uh, Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen, and so let us turn our attention to our audience of one and let us worship.
And now, if you would bow your heads, humble your hearts, and lift your thoughts toward the Lord. Let us pray. Holy Father, it is so good to be in your presence this morning. Fresh on our minds is that all your promises are yes in Christ. God, none of your promises ever fail. We count on every single one of them, Lord, that you would sustain us through these uncertain days, that you shield us, that you are our refuge, that you forgive us, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And there's nowhere we can go where you cannot find us. God, we find these promises so comforting that you are so faithful to us. And today we would ask that you would help us in turn to be faithful to you. We turn our backs on you. We do things our own way. We think we know the, the right way, the better way. And there you go, getting us straight again. God, thank you that we have you for that. That we can rest assured that wherever our path leads us, when we fix our eyes on you, that we will have victory. God, these days are so uncertain. We feel lost without our calendars, our agendas, a full day of activities. And we just don't know what to do with the time on our hands. The days are too quiet, too still, but even so, that's what you would require of us. God, you want us to be still in your presence, and so here we are. We surrender ourselves to you, our days to you, and we submit to your will. And we ask that you would help us because we're lost without you. God, this morning, as we've worshiped you through song, and now we humble ourselves in prayer, we pray that it's pleasing in your sight. And as each of us join together, as one body, one in spirit, we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. As we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please receive this offering of music as we give back to God. Thank you.
Good morning, boys and girls. I have a question for you. What is one of the first things your teacher does when you go to school? She checks her role. She wants to know who is present in class that day. She may call out the names of Carson, Jacob, Lindy, Lorla, and if you are present in class, you get to say here. However, if you are not in class, then nothing is said, and she puts a letter A beside your name. Now, that's important to her because that tells her who was at class and who was not. And when you return to school, she is able to tell you what you missed because you were absent. Now, one of the, that's similar to something that happened in our Bible lesson today. It was the Sunday after Jesus was crucified, and the disciples were locked in a room. Now, the room was locked because they were afraid of what Jesus' enemies may do to them. But guess what happened? Jesus appeared before them, even though that room was locked, and the disciples were so very happy. One of the disciples, whose name was Thomas, was not in the locked room the day that Jesus appeared. I'm not real sure why he wasn't there. Maybe he wasn't feeling good, or maybe he just decided he was going to stay home. But when the disciples saw him, they told him exactly what happened, that Jesus was there and he is alive. But Thomas did not believe them. And he said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. The next week, the disciples were in the house again, but Thomas was with them this time. And the very same thing happened. Jesus appeared before his disciples even though the door was locked. And he looked at Thomas and he said, here, touch my hands. Put your hand in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas did not put touch Jesus at all. He went to his knees and he said, my Lord and my God. One of the greatest promises Jesus made was when he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there too. Each week, we come together in the name of Jesus to worship and to praise him. So what do we miss out on if we are not at church? We miss out on the same thing that Thomas missed out on when he was absent. We miss out on a chance to be with Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we have come and gathered in your name today because we want to be with you. We have come to worship and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John in the 20th chapter, beginning with verse 24. Hear then these words from the Apostle John. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. 
And this is the gospel of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Thanks be to God. Well, here we are again uh, in this sanctuary without you. And as I said last week, I cannot wait until we are back together again. Now, ironically, we are also at the same place in the scriptures we were last week. And so the passage I shared with you just a moment ago might seem a little bit familiar. Last week, we ended with the disciples rejoicing over being reunited with Jesus, but Thomas was not there. And this is where our story picks up today. And so, biblically speaking, we are standing once again, along with all of the disciples, in that upper room with the doors shut, and the risen Lord enters, and this time Thomas is with them. And we see how Jesus shows Thomas his hands and his side, and how he, Thomas then believes in the resurrection, and then he cries out with the very first affirmation of faith, my Lord and my God. Now, I know that Easter has come and gone in many of your minds, but we are still in the season of Easter till we celebrate the Lord's ascension to the right hand of the Father on May the 24th. And so today I want to talk some more about the resurrection. And here's a spoiler alert for you. I'm going to talk about it next week. And so often, big events in our lives are experienced in an intense rush in the moment. So much so that we have no time to unpack just what happened to us. Easter strikes me as that kind of moment. We are tempted to experience it like a kind of relief, like, thank God it's behind us. But if we leave it there, then we have celebrated Easter without asking why it really matters. Yes, it is a relief to reach the finish line, but why did we run the race at all? Why is the resurrection of Jesus Christ so important that we keep talking about it weeks after the celebration? Well, I'm guessing that it has a lot to do with the fact that in order to understand Easter and the new life it brings to us, we have to first understand something that we avoid like the coronavirus, something that we do not want to talk about, and that would be death. Oh, how we hate that subject. Oh, we would do almost anything to avoid talking about it or even thinking about it. However, the fact that we are surrounded by so much death right now with COVID-19 makes our understanding of it and the importance of Easter all the more significant. So let's dig in. Scientists tell us that physically we are developing until we reach about the age of 25. So whoever reaches the age of 30 begins to realize that the body is slowing down and it's not working like it used to. Instead of growing, our body is already dying. And by the time we are 40, we probably start thinking about actively fighting to keep our body going like it used to. And so what do we do? We exercise, we diet, uh, we take vitamins. And we also start to think, you know, I'm about the halfway point of my life. And when we reach 50 or 60 and beyond, we begin, we begin to be acutely aware of the fact that there is more time behind us than there is now in front of us. And so yes, as we grow older, we have to admit that death comes to us all. I have a good friend who says it this way, none of us is getting out of this alive. Unfortunately, death touches us in other ways as well. We have to watch people die. We watch our grandparents and our parents and our friends die. And of course, during this crisis, we are actually keeping up with the death count from the coronavirus on a daily basis, which by the way, at this time, now stands at nearly 200,000 worldwide, more than 50,000 in America, and about 600 right here in Texas. And so the reality is that physical death is everywhere. 
People's lives are being snuffed out, and their presence as a person disappears from this planet. In an instant, we have lost them, and we ache over that loss. And because of this virus, I wanted to say something else, we can't even mourn the death of our loved ones properly. Try as we might, we cannot escape the world of physical death. But death actually touches us in a way that probably is far deeper than most of us realize, and it is at this level, the spiritual level, that I want us to consider this morning. But what does that mean? What does spiritual death mean? Well, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15, Paul tells us that we are in a lifetime bondage to sin because of our fear of death. That is an amazing passage of Scripture. We are in a lifetime bondage to sin because of our fear of death. And he goes on to say that that bondage is a slavery to everything that separates us from God. This is an extremely important passage of Scripture for us to come to understand what it means when we talk about spiritual death. So let me explain a little bit more about this passage. Now, when we think about it, we don't usually feel sin as slavery, do we? That's what Paul is saying, but we don't feel it that way, do we? As a matter of fact, for the most part, we usually feel sin as what? We feel it as freedom. How so? Well, we believe I am free to have sex outside of Christian marriage. We believe I'm free to treat others with disdain. I am free to be angry and violent. I am free to take what I want. I am free to disobey God and his commandments. I am free to neglect worship and prayer. I am free not to care. In short, I am free to do what I want when I want. Oh, how we love our so-called freedom. So why do we feel sin as freedom? It is because if we accept limitations on what we ought to be doing and thinking, then we experience those limitations as a violation of our own sense of identity, our own desires, which is then perceived as an impingement upon our freedom. But how is that related then to the fear of death? Well, if we proudly think We have so carefully constructed for ourselves an identity for ourselves. And if someone says we ought to be doing something different, that person is a threat to our way of life, even if it is God. It is in this sense of threat that Paul identifies as the fear of death, death to our way of life, to our way that we want to live our life. And so we fear that our life will not continue the way we want it, and consequently we experience this restriction to our identity as a kind of death. So what do we do? Well, we lash out. We sin because of our fear of this kind of death, the death of my life, my way. This is the all-pervasive spiritual death that we all experience. So why does Paul call it bondage? Well, think about it. Think about how hard we have to work to keep up that defensive posture. Think about the things that we do to keep anyone or anything from encroaching upon our desires and our identity. Is that not bondage? Have you ever been in an argument with someone and suddenly you realize that you were wrong? Uh, And all you have to do is admit it and change directions, but instead you keep on arguing just because you want to be right? That, my friends, is slavery. Like the apostle said, it's a kind of bondage to everything that separates us from God. And since God is life, anything that separates us from him is not life. It is death. Now, I know that was a lot to take in, but it is very important for you to understand what spiritual death really is and how we all experience it. 
Because if you don't understand death in all of its forms, especially spiritual death, you will never understand the true beauty of Easter and the fullness of life that it is offering to you right now. So, now for the good news. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ changes all of that. All that stuff I just tried to explain to you, guess what? The resurrection changes all of that. Because Christ is risen, all forms of death are now overthrown. Because Christ is risen, the demons who tempt us are fallen. Because Christ is risen, not one dead remains in the grave. How is this good news? Well, John 5, 25 tells us that there will come a day when all of the dead in the graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and will rise, some to the resurrection of life and some to the resurrection of judgment. And then all our desires, all our fallen identities that we have so carefully constructed for ourselves will not matter one bit. They will have died and we will rise. Now, as good as all that is, there is a catch, and you knew there'd be one of those, didn't you? Because here comes the hard part. Listen very carefully. Whether we are raised to the resurrection of life, and by the way, that's the one we want to be raised to, whether we are raised to the resurrection of life will depend on whether we made resurrection a part of our lives right now, not just on the last day, but right now which means we do not have to live in fear of death, physical or spiritual. We do not have to let our desires control us anymore. That is the freedom that Christ brought to us. Because of the resurrection, we can choose not to sin. Because of the resurrection, we can choose to live our lives in a completely different way from what the world has to offer. Because of the resurrection, we can choose to be more and more like Christ. So here are the questions that confront us this morning, even in the midst of this pandemic. Is Easter a part of our daily life? Are we partaking of Christ's resurrection? And here's the really important one. Are we letting our identity that we have so carefully constructed for ourselves decrease so that his identity in us may increase as it says in John 3.30, this is why we call Christianity life. Being a Christian, being in Christ, means that we have a new life, even though the general resurrection has not yet happened. How so? Because in baptism, we are being raised to the newness of life, as it says in Romans chapter 6, verse 4. We are already partaking in the resurrection of Christ. And so we already have all of that resurrection power all around us. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 4, that Christ is our life. And when he returns, we will appear with him in glory. And at the end of our gospel passage today, John tells us that he wrote everything in his gospel so that we would believe and that we would have life in his name, which in many ways explains why we feel the way we do about Easter. It is because we have received resurrection power. We have received it, and we have life in his name now. And so you see, resurrection is not just something that happened to Jesus some 2,000 plus years ago, something that proves that he is God and that we celebrate once a year, and it is not just something that's going to happen to all of us at the end of time. Resurrection is now. Resurrection is the end of death, both physical and spiritual. The Scriptures tell us in Romans chapter 6, verse 9, that death no longer has dominion over him, and if we are in Christ, death in any form has no, long, is no longer has dominion over any of us either. We do not have to be slaves to our fears of death and to our false identities. Nothing in this world, including the coronavirus, has any real power over us. 
Because of resurrection, we can let it all go. We can be humble, and we can let all the threats to our identity and our desires come as they are obliterated by the resurrection. So let us die to the world that we may live in Christ and Christ may live in us so that we may see him and with Thomas we might cry out, my Lord and my God. Yes, we say Christ is risen, indeed he is risen for 40 days and that is a wonderful tradition. But we proclaim his death and resurrection throughout all of our lives. And so we do not have to fear anything anymore. We do not have to worry about what might happen tomorrow or today or tomorrow or next week or next year or at the end of our days. Why? Because we are being raised with our Savior and our Lord. So for us, we live by this understanding. Listen very carefully. For us, we live by this understanding. What would that understanding be? Christ is risen and nothing else matters. Christ is risen and nothing else matters. Amen? And so, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who who was condescended to become one of us, who took up his cross for us, who was raised from the dead for us, who ascended to the right hand of the Father for us in order to send the Holy Spirit to us and share the life of God with us. To him be all glory, honor, majesty, and worship, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Lord, how we fear death. We fear it so much so that we avoid even thinking about it. And yet, O Lord, we know that death comes to us all and it has many forms. We see it not only when we lose a loved one or a friend, we also see it in ourselves when we lash out at anyone who challenges our way of life. We even see it in ourselves when you challenge us with a way of life that is contrary to what we think is best. And every time we respond out of this fear, we separate ourselves from you, who is our life. But you, O Lord, have given us a way to stop this nonsense. You have given us resurrection power, the power that defeats all forms of death. And all we have to do is live in that power that changes everything not off in the distant future, but now. And so, dear Lord, help us today in your name to choose life so that we, along with Thomas, can truly say, my Lord and my God. Amen. Would you join us as we close with more praises to God? i
Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. And you are sent in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forward into this glorious day and live in God's peace. Oh,